All right, guys, so by now you should be pretty used to uh, using use substitution to integrate. Now, we're going to do exactly the same thing as what we did in 64 and 65, but notice that now we have a definite integral, meaning that once we find the integral of this, we're going to use, um, we're going to integrate between 0 and 1. Okay, so uh, let's, if you notice, by the way, if you're looking at this, and if you did 65, you notice that on this one, for example, you have this if on the denominator, right? And if you try, if you take the derivative of this, you would get five, uh, sorry, six x to the fifth power. So notice you have x to the fifth power up here. So we're gonna let this be u, the inside of that. So we're gonna say that let u be equal to x to the sixth power plus one, okay? Now if we do that, then we're gonna let du be 6x to the fifth power dx. Right, and notice that I have x to the fifth power dx right there. All right, however, I have a 6 here that I need to get rid of, so what I can do is I can divide both sides by 6, and I will have the x to, x to the fifth power dx is equal to du over 6 or 1 sixth of du. Okay, so now we're going to go ahead and, um, well, let's go ahead and rewrite this in terms of u. So we have, let's see, I'm going to write this as u to the negative 3 power times du over 6. All right, now before you write the definite, the, the two values here, the lower boundary and the upper boundary, all right, because you use substitution, you're going to have to replace this, all right? So if we... There's a relation between x and u here that was defined right here. Okay, so we're gonna have to we're gonna have to replace this. For example, the lower boundary, if x is zero, meaning if I plug in a zero right here, all right, zero to the sixth power plus one, that's still gonna be one. So u is one. Alright, and if I let x be equal to 1, if I let this be equal to 1, I have 1 to the 6, which is 1, plus 1 is 2. So if I let x be 1, u would be 2. Okay? So my boundaries now are going to change from the lower, which is not going to be 1, and my upper boundary is going to be 2. Alright, so that's about the only difference uh, that you will see on this lesson. Anyway. So from there on, really, after that, you just have to remember how to integrate. So notice that what I'm going to do here is uh, this du over 6, I'm going to pull that out, out of the integral, and that's going to become 1 sixth. So we have 1 and 2 here, u to the negative 3 du. All right, so after that, we're going to integrate. So we have 1 over 6 u to the negative 2 over negative 2. Right? And really from here on out, the only problem is going to be to try not to get lost because there's a lot of minute details on here that can definitely mess you up. Okay? So this is going to be equal to 1 over 6, 1 over negative 2 u squared. And you have a 1 and 2 there. Now, you really have an option here. If you want to go ahead and plug those values in here, you can, uh, or you can pull a negative one half out of this, which that's what I'm going to do. However, you don't have to. So if you want to integrate that as it is, do it. All right. So this is going to be one over negative one over twelve, one over u square, and we're going to evaluate that between two and one, or one and two. Right again, notice that this negative 1 over 12 came from me pulling out this negative 2 out of this equation, and that became a 1 over negative 12, or negative 1 over 12, which is the same thing. So this is going to be, well, we're going to leave that the same. Remember, we're going to plug in this 2 here, so we have 1 over 4, okay, minus. 1 over 1 if I plug in this 1 right here. So if at this moment you don't know where I got this 1 fourth and 1 here, then you probably need to come talk to me. Okay, so anyway, so this is going to be equal to 
negative 1 over 12 times negative 3 over 4. The negative 3 over 4 here came from subtracting those two. That's going to be equal to 1 over 16. All right, so that's going to be it. Now, I don't mind if you check in your calculator. You can go ahead and check in your calculator if you have to, but make sure you try to do most of this by hand. All right, it's good practice because you're going to have the non-calculator part of this test eventually. All right, example two. So in this one, all right, same thing. If we let, remember, by the last lesson, you always want to look inside the function. Usually, that's whenever you're you. All right, the inner part of the fu of this sine function. So we have, we're going to let u be equal to 3x. And du, therefore, is going to be 3 dx. But if you notice, one more time, again, if we let this be u, and we let this be dx, notice that I don't have a 3 anywhere on here. So what I have to do is I have to divide this by 3, divide this by 3, okay? All right, one more time, we're going to rewrite this. So we have the integral of sine u du over 3, okay? Now to write our boundaries, remember that we're going to have to replace them, all right, with, uh, there's a relationship with x and u, so you're going to have to use that. So if x is 0, I plug in a 0 here, u is 0. So if x is 0, u is 0. If x is pi over 12, all right, again, pi over 12, if x is that, and I plug it in right here, 3 times pi over 12 would give me pi over 4. All right, so you just have to be careful about that. So my new boundaries are going to be 0 and pi over 4. Okay. So now uh, I just integrate. So again, I'm going to pull out this as a 1 third here. So we have 1 third integral uh, between 0 and pi over 4 of sine u du. And that's going to be equal to one third. Uh, let's see, one third. The antiderivative of sine, or the integral of sine, is negative cosine. Negative cosine u. We're going to evaluate that between pi, uh, zero and pi over four. Okay. So we have one third. Now again, we start off by plugging in the larger value, the upper boundary. So the cosine of pi, the negative cosine of the negative cosine of pi over four, is going to be equal to negative pi. Oh, sorry, negative square root of two over two, right? Minus minus the lower lower boundary. So notice that the cosine of zero, the cosine of zero, sorry, the negative cosine of zero would be negative one. So if I make a negative, minus a negative one, we'll make this a positive one, okay? So now that is going to give me the square root of two over six plus one third. And again, uh, I just distributed here. Now to find a common denominator, if I do, I will end up with five over two plus two over 6. All right, so there's that. Okay, let's go to example 3. So again, if I'm going too fast, make sure to rewind, rewatch this, ask me questions the next day. All right, example 3. So on this one, I actually have two functions here. So you always want to look to see if you can make this easier. And you can if you split this up into two different functions. So I have the integral of pi over 4 pi over 3, oh, I'm going to put that 4 out here, I'm going to go ahead and pull that out, sine of 2 pi. So right now I'm not doing any substitution yet. I'm just splitting that. I'm splitting this up, this integral. So we have uh, 2 theta d theta plus 6 integral between pi over 4 and pi over 3 of cosine 3 theta d theta 
All right, so notice that I, on this one, I went ahead and split it up, and this will make it easier, but now I have to use two substitutions. So we're going to treat this as if there were two different problems. All right, so on this first one, the one on the left, I'm going to let u be equal to 2 theta, and du will be equal to 2 dx. But again, same idea, I don't have a 2 here inside this integral, so I'm going to have to divide by 2. Okay, so now I have that, and uh, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna go ahead and uh, replace this up so before I do. Well, I guess I can wait. I got sine of u du over two, and I need to find my boundaries. To find my boundaries again, there is a relationship between, in this case, theta and u. Right, the lower boundary, if I plug in a pi over 4 into this one, 2 times pi over 4 is pi over 2. So if theta is pi over 4, u is pi over 2. And if si oh, sorry, if um, theta is pi over 3, all right, if I plug in a pi over 3 over here, well, I'll just get 2 pi over 3. 2 pi over 3. So that's what I have. Okay? So uh, that's going to be my new boundaries now. So I have pi over 2. And I have 2 pi over 3. And on this side, I'm going to have to do another substitution. So I have if, and I'm going to let this be a different variable just so I don't get the u's confused here. So instead of saying u, I'm going to say let w. Let w be equal to 3 theta. All right, and again, I'm trying to find, I'm making a substitution here. All right, so this, this has nothing to do with this for now. All right, so we have let w be equal to 3 theta. So dw will be equal to 3 d theta, which, which one more time, I can make this, I can divide this by 3 and divide this by 3, and I'm only doing that because I don't have a, besides this 3, which is inside the cosine, I don't have another 3 here, so I need a, I needed to get rid of that, alright, so I do that by dividing by 3, so this one right here would be 6 cosine of w dw, and this d w is over 3, okay? Now one more time because I, I need to change my boundaries here. So if I let, um, there's a relationship between theta and w. So if I let theta be equal to pi over 4, I notice that if I plug in a pi over 4 here, I'm going to get 3 pi over 4. On the next one, if I plug in a pi over 3 into this right here, if I let theta be pi over 3, well, 3 times pi over 3, that's just pi. All right, so I'm going to integrate between pi over 3 and pi. All right, I'm going to go ahead and integrate that. So, this part I will do relatively quickly here. Well, this is going to be, notice that what I'm going to do from this step to the next is I'm going to pull out this 1 half. And when I multiply 1 half times 4, that's going to give me 2. So I have 2. And just this is just to further simplify my, my problem. And I'm going to do the same thing here. I'm going to pull a 1 third out, and that's going to also become a 2. So 1 third times 2, sorry, 1 third times 6, that's 2. So this is going to be... Oh, I just noticed that I wrote the wrong thing here. You gotta be careful with that. I actually made that mistake a couple of times while doing the key for the homework, so be careful. Alright, so again, this is actually 3 pi over 4, and this is pi. Alright, so you gotta be careful with that. Alright, so we have 3 pi over 4 down here, we have pi up here, 
And then we have the cosine w dw. All right, so after that, let's go ahead and integrate. So we have 2 negative cosine of u. Evaluate that between 2 uh, pi over 2 and 2 pi over 3 on this one. And the integral of cosine is going to be sine on this one. So sine w. Evaluate that between 3 pi over 4 and pi. All right, so uh, hopefully you remember your unit circle. And if you don't, this would be a good time to try to learn <laughs> what you're doing. All right, uh, what I'm going to do also to make this easier so I don't have to worry about this negative, I'm going to pull that out. So I'm going to have negative 2. Okay, so now I'm only going to do the cosine of 2 pi over 3. Now the cosine of 2 pi over 3 is obviously... negative one half, okay? And the cosine of pi over two is zero. So we have minus a zero, okay? And again, the notice that you don't have to pull this negative out. If you don't want to pull that negative out, that's fine. It'll turn out to be the same answer. So uh, the next one, uh, the sine of pi would be zero. And the sine of 3 pi over 4, you know that's in the second quadrant, would be the square roots of 2 over 2. All right, so make sure that you know your unit circle. If you do, then you're going to have no problems when it comes to do this. All right, if you don't, then you need to come, you need to kind of either relearn it, go to Ms. Rowe, have her reteach you. If not, at worst, I guess I can talk about it yet again. But that's something you should already know. All right, so that's the answer right there. Okay, you can kind of finish out if you don't see how I got that. You can go ahead and do this, but that's going to be your answer. All right, so let's go to the next one here on the back. On the back, you have a, it's actually going to be pretty quick. You have a couple of rules here, and they're actually really, really useful. If you have an even function, all right, and they're asking you to integrate that between negative a and a, because this is a, an even function, so think of it like an x squared function. All right, the integral of that would be the same thing as finding the integral between here and here, between 0 and a, and then multiplying that times 2. So again, all you would need to do is find the integral between here and here, and then multiply that times 2, and you would get the answer. All right? Now, that one's useful, but it's even more useful if it's an odd function, because if it's an odd function, you know for sure, and you're integrating between um, basically the length between 0 and this a value has to be the same as between zero and this value, all right, the distance. And if it is between negative a and a, then, and if it's an odd function, then the integral will be zero. So you don't have, actually have to do a whole lot of math for that, okay? So, for example, the integral of sine x evaluated between negative pi and pi, okay? Now, if you don't know what that looks like, Hopefully this is a refresher for you too. Um, what is sine of zero? Sine of zero is zero. Okay, so you would have something that looks like this somewhat. This would be like one here. You know, this would be like negative one. This would be pi. This would be pi over two. So hopefully you remember all that. But if you don't, uh, well, you got time to remember. So please don't just ignore it and hope that it's not on the test, because it will be. All right, and again, this would be negative pi over 2. And again, you just have to think about it. If sine, sine of 0 is 0, sine of pi over 2 would be 1. So that's what that point is doing right here. Uh, sine of negative pi over 2 which be, would be negative 1. All right, so at this point, I would have to be about right there. And the sine of negative pi is 0, so I have to go back to that. OK, so notice that the area here and the area here are basically, not basically, they are exactly the same, but this is a positive area, that's a negative area. So they're actually going to cancel out. So the answer to this is zero. Now, if you didn't, like, how does that apply to this? Well, sine is an odd function. It's an odd function. 
All right, so if you knew that to begin with, if you knew that sine was of odd function and notice that your integral is between, basically, these are the same numbers, but one's negative, one's positive. So therefore, this is going to be zero always. All right, so say they would ask you the same exact question, but this is between, I don't know, negative pi over 12 to pi over 12. Well, I'm not going to do that because that's still going to be zero because this is an odd function. So if it's an odd function, they're going to cancel out, and you can kind of see that with this picture. Okay, so again, if you get lost, make sure to see me. All right, I'm going to go fast from now on, so don't, don't get lost. If you do, you need to come see me. All right, until next time.